Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Grant Tangay. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we gather together today knowing that God loves us, knowing that he knows us more deeply than we know ourselves. And in the gospel today, we hear a call from God to listen to one another more deeply, to encounter one another as human beings, as God's sons and daughters. But we also come to the table of the Lord today knowing that we do not always listen as he wants us to. We do not always encounter one another as God's sons and daughters. So we come to the table of the Lord today, knowing that we need his grace and that we need his forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us raise our hearts up to God to give Him glory. Glory, glory to God Christ in the house and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, The Lord has saved his people, the remnants of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her who is in Trevi, together a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. When the Lord brought back the exiles of Zion, 
we thought we were dreaming. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our tongue songs of joy. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Then the nations themselves said, What great deeds the Lord worked for them. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Bring back our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. They go out, they go out, full of tears, bearing seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back with a song, bearing their sheaves. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among people is appointed to act on behalf of them in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is bound to offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not take the honor upon himself, but he is called by God, just as Aaron was. So also, Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our Saviour, Christ Jesus, abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, rise, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Master, let me receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go on your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The story of blind Bartimaeus can conjure up a lot of images for us. If we were to place ourselves in the position of Bartimaeus in our imaginations, what would it be like? Being blind, we wouldn't be able to see anything around us. We would have access to what is going on around us by what we could hear was going on in the street. Presumably from the story, we we, we would be sitting at the entrance to the town of Jericho on the side of the road. 
we could imagine having a bowl in front of us to collect money and the road perhaps being dusty. Maybe it is a hot day as well. We might imagine that the street is busy. Maybe there are a lot of people walking past us on their way in or out of the town. There may be lots of noises in the background, such as people's footsteps and people talking to one another as they walk past. As a beggar relying on the help of others for our survival, we would need to grab people's attention. So perhaps we would raise our voice above the noises of the street to draw attention to ourselves, to ask for help. This is where it gets interesting. As Bartimaeus, we are a part of the forgotten or the unnoticed of the city of Jericho. The city does not notice people like us. So why do we begin to scream out for Jesus when he comes close to us? If we are so used to being walked past and ignored, why do we scream out for him? It gets more interesting. When we do scream out, the people around us tell us to stop screaming, presumably because they think the master does not want to be bothered by the noise of a beggar on the side of a road. Maybe they think he has more important things to worry about. We must be used to this kind of treatment from the people around us. So why do we keep calling out to Jesus? What makes us so insistent that Jesus listen to us? The answer to that question comes at the end of the gospel story today. Bartimaeus screams out for Jesus because he believes that Jesus has the power to heal him. He has the faith that if he can be heard by the master, things will be better for him. He knows that if, if Jesus just can hear what he has to say, Jesus can change his life. So he calls out in desperation. Jesus does hear him and asks for him to be brought to him. But Jesus' listening does not stop there. He asks Bartimaeus what he wants Jesus to do for him. Jesus doesn't assume that Bartimaeus wants to regain his sight. Jesus treats him in a different way to all the people who walk past him without seeing him. Jesus treats him like a human being and has a true encounter with Bartimaeus. When he finally gets his opportunity, he tells Jesus that he wants to see again. Then Jesus heals him saying to him that his faith has made him well. This story is a story about encounter. Can we imagine how our interactions would be different if we truly encountered one another in our daily conversations? What if we spoke to people in our daily lives having faith that whatever we said would be really heard and that such encounters could be transformative? Would we be more willing to share our lives, our thoughts, our emotions, our dreams and hopes with those around us? Probably. But what would it take to be convinced that others would be receptive to us and convinced that this encounter could change us? Like Bartimaeus, we are all probably used to people who pass us by in our daily lives, who are not really interested in what we have to say or in who we are. In order to speak out more deeply, we would need to have more faith in our fellow human beings around us. But how would that faith be nurtured? Perhaps if we ourselves were to start listening more deeply in our own conversations, we could encourage true encounters to happen. If the people who we spoke with got the sense that we were really listening, perhaps they would gain in confidence and they might begin to share more of who they really are with us. This could be a start, a start of community building, where encounter was the norm rather than the exception. This kind of community building is precisely what Pope Francis is hoping for. On October the 10th, Pope Francis formally began the preparatory period for the Synod which period will culminate in a synodal assembly in Rome in 2023. In his homily on that day, he expressed his hopes for the Synod, asking, in the church, are we good at listening? How good is the hearing of our heart? Do we allow people to express themselves, to walk in faith, even though they have had difficulties in life, and to be a part of the life of the community, 
without being hindered, rejected, or judged. Considering the gospel today, this statement from Pope Francis gives us reason to pause. In our parish communities, are we really listening to one another? How many Bartimaeuses do we ignore, walking past them on the way to other things? A similar question might be, how confident are we that people would listen if we truly told our stories, what's and all? Do we think that we would be judged or even perhaps rejected? If in answering these questions we admit that there are many Bartimaeuses that we walk past and that we ourselves have no confidence that we would be listened to if we told our stories, then we know why Pope Francis wants to have this synod. The kingdom of God, whatever definition we use, must surely be a community where people are listening to one another and where people have the confidence to share with one another their problems and challenges. If this synod can help us to build this kingdom, surely this would be a life-changing event for the church. This is our hope for the synod. Let our church community become a place where such transformative encounters like the one between Jesus and Bartimaeus are not exceptional. On the contrary, with God's grace, let our church community be known for such encounters. Encounters where the Holy Spirit can move and love and heal. May this synod teach us to share our lives more deeply with one another and to listen more carefully to those around us, building up the kingdom of God. Let us proclaim our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from God, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from him. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Conscious that God cares for us and that he wants to give us what we need to praise, reverence, and serve him, let us come to him in confident prayer. We pray for the preparation of the upcoming synod. May the Holy Spirit help the church to nurture an environment of true encounter, helping her to discern the will of God and to boldly carry it out. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the bishops around the world who will be engaged with listening to various groups in their diocese during this time of preparation. May God guide them in their work, helping them to walk with all God's people as we build his kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who feel marginalized in our church communities. 
May this synod be a time of healing, where the community stops to listen to the stories that have yet to be told with reverence and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our families. May the Holy Spirit give parents and children the grace to listen to one another, as well as the confidence to share what is on their hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the sick, the lonely, the oppressed, and the suffering. May they never be discarded, but rather treasured and cared for as the face of Christ in a suffering world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Father, you sent Jesus to walk among us so that he might draw near to us and that we might draw near to you. Listen to the prayers of your faithful as we pour out our hearts before you. Give us all that we need to serve you and to walk more closely with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May all accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of Christ's name, our good and of all God's holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
that Tani was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bhuti, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament 
and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.